Plaintiff Joey Pulver says he met the defendant in a liquor store four years ago and they became drinking buddies. Joey is suing because he claims the defendant got drunk, set some furniture on fire in Joey's backyard, and as a result, Joey's siding was damaged. Defendant Andrew Homerding admits that he had a drinking problem, but insists he went to rehab and sobered up. Andrew claims while in rehab, his mother was forced to press charges against Joey for telephone harassment, and he's countersuing for unreturned property. Start with you. I've known Andrew for over four years now, and we met at a liquor store. And you all met at the met liquor at a store. liquor store, and he knew some people that I knew, and we got to become friends. We hung out together. We both drank, so we partied, you know. I'm just curious, what did you all say at the liquor store when you saw each other? To at one time, he was working friendship? at the store. Huh? At one time, he was working at the store. Oh, okay. All right. So that makes sense. Go ahead. So then we just became friends because he knew friends that, you know, mm -hmm. we knew. That we you all became drinking buddies? Pretty much so, yes, Your Honor. What's it been like, that friendship? It was pretty rough at times because of How the drinking. So? The drinking. What would happen? With him, it was, I mean, it was, it was two sides, but with him, he couldn't keep a job because of his drinking. And he has two kids, and I know he loves his kids and everything. I'm not going to run him down on that, but he couldn't take care of his kids. And his girlfriend would kick him out. I'd take him back in. She'd take him back in again, back out, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Then the final straw was... He ended up getting kicked out again. He had to go to the shelter, and he had brought bed bugs into my house. So I had to throw all my furniture out. Mm. Sir, what do you want to tell me about yourself and uh, about him as we well? Met. I'm sure you want to talk about his drinking. Um, pretty much, he's a drunk. We were drunks. Um, we you were drunks? You've cleaned yourself up? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Um, I met him, and like you said, I moved in and there on and off. Um, things did get rough. I did have a drinking problem. Went to rehab and solved that. Good. Uh, while I was in rehab, though, he continued to drink, continued to get drunk, and he'd call and harass my mother, uh, wanting information about me, a phone number he can reach me. And she got tired of it, but he kept calling and leaving voicemails. So she finally pressed charges for telephone harassment. And results of that, he ended up doing 45 days for that. Really? Yeah. But what it, city you all live in? <laughs> Jackson, Michigan? Yes, sir. They give out that much time for calling he's of somebody had, out on the phone. He's had past uh, charges of telephone harassment. Got it. All right. So what do you say to this? Well, and when I did have the phone harassment charges, he was still living at my house. But what were you calling his mother for? That's when he was gone, I was trying to locate him. For what? Because all of his property was at my house. All right. And what about the other phone call charges in the past? That was with my brother. That was family dealings. All right. You telephone man. <laughs> <laughs> Things did get rough. I did have a drinking problem. Went to rehab and saw that. Good. While I was in rehab, though, he continued to drink, continued to get drunk, and he'd call and harass my mother. Defendant Andrew Homerding was friends with the plaintiff, but he claims while he was in rehab, his mother was forced to press charges against the plaintiff for telephone harassment. Has he ever gone to rehab, to your knowledge? Not since I've met him, no. You think he's still alcohol addicted? Yes, sir. Are you, sir? I drink occasionally, Just but... take a shot of whiskey every now and then? Yep. You know, it's more like a fifth. You drink a fifth at a time? No. How much at one time? Maybe a pint. By yourself in one sitting? No. No, we aren't. All right, sir. If you want help with it uh, to overcome any alcohol problem you might have, let us know. Um, what are you suing him about? I'm suing him for the property damage of $2,400 for where he set my backyard on fire and it melted all the siding off the back of my house. He set your backyard on fire where the furniture was at. When was this? And um, maybe your bed bugs did it. 
No, the bed bugs were out there. They were setting it on fire to kill the bed bugs. It was 10, it was 10 22, 15. Why do you think he did that? Or why did he do it? You should know by now. I was up on the roof. He was drunk when he came what out there. What were you there. doing on the roof? Fixing the chimney. <laughs> and he just went downstairs and set the place on fire? The, yes. The grass? No, the furniture that was out back. Okay, did you find out why he may have done it? He was drunk. Okay. And does he typically set things on fire when he's no. drunk? All right. So did you find out why, in this instance, he decided he to He was burn burning the furniture is right. all I can tell you. You don't know why, other than he was drunk. He didn't even remember. So what do you say to this? Your Honor, I remember the day of, to this day. Uh, <laughs> it started... I suggested that we burn the furniture to get rid of it because it was just taking up space in the backyard. Uh, he gave me permission to... You were drunk. <laughs> yes, we were both intoxicated that day. Oh, yeah. And you said to him, this is too much, let's just burn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, that's a good idea? Or what did he, he, gave, he basically gave me permission to burn the furniture. Then it ended up getting out of hand, and that's when the... Fires. Start burning your yeah, house. started mel melting the siding off the house. How did you all put it out? Uh, we started running frantically inside and out of the house, getting five gallon buckets of water until the neighbors called the fire department on us. Because <laughs> we're not allowed to openly burn in, within city limits. No stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, he says you, you all conspired to do it. He said he asked, uh, let's do it to save room, and you said, Go ahead, good idea. Absolutely not. He woke up the next morning, Your Honor, and I had this ticket right here. Let me see it, please. And I handed that ticket to him, and he said, when did you get that? And I said, yesterday, when you set the backyard on fire. And his exact words was, well, I thought I was dreaming. I said, then you go out the back door and you look at what you've done. And that's exactly what he done. So you're still drinking? No, I'm not. So you just, the ticket you gave me accuses you, and this is what I thought it might have been, of burning, um, and burning something infested with bed bugs in your backyard. This is what it said. They, because it was my property, so they had to give me the ticket. He was in the front yeah, room. Yeah, but passed you said out. the perp. I ask you, why do you think he did it? I don't know. I was on the roof. Oh, I was on the roof. So you do know because it's listed on the ticket. Y'all trying to make a fool out of me. I said it. I said, okay, you did it to burn the bed bugs. Is that? because they're hard to get rid of. And that doesn't sound totally unreasonable, quite frankly, to burn it up. Not in the backyard attached to the house. <laughs> and it says you did it. You gave me a ticket that said you did it. And thank God he says he did it, but it was with your approval and your invitation. That case got thrown out, Your Honor. But it's regarding the same incident, right? What does he owe you for, sir? Uh, personal property. How? Uh, when, after that incident happened, um, I was at probation at the time. He called my probation For officer. what, for this? No, previous charge. Trespassing and disturbing the peace. Um, What'd you do that time? I was going through a breakup with my the mother of my children, and I went over there and trespassed on our property. And okay, so tell me how he owes you. Uh, when, after that incident happened, he called my probation officer, and he came out and gave me a breathalyzer test, and I got sent to jail for three days. Um, I got out, I went to his house to receive, or to recover some personal property that I could carry. Um, later on, about a week and a half later, before I get the rest of my stuff, I went back to jail for about uh, 75 days. Um, got out, uh, my mom, while I was in jail, picked up most of my stuff, um, but she didn't receive some of the personal property, and some of it had some sentimental value to me that's irreplaceable. Um, I have a quilt. When you ask him about it, what has he said? He said he doesn't have it. Sir, what do you tell me about his property? As far as the quilt goes, he was at my house three weeks ago, 
and pick that quilt up. And if I were you at his house three weeks ago? Your Honor, he has a restraining order on me. I don't he, know his house. He, what, you were not at his house no, three sir. weeks ago. That's an easy answer. Yes. Is there a restraining order? Yes, sir. Did Honor. he violate it? Yes, he did. Did you go and file um, charges for violation? No, he took the quilt and I let him. He went on his way. He continued to drink, continued to get drunk, and he'd call and harass my mother, uh, wanting information about me. And she got tired of it, but he kept calling and leaving voicemails. So she finally pressed charges for telephone harassment. And results of that, he ended up doing 45 days for that. Defendant Andrew Homerding was friends with the plaintiff, but he claims while he was in rehab, his mother was forced to press charges against the plaintiff for telephone harassment. What about the other items? What else are you suing him for? Uh, I had a stereo and a cell phone. What about that, sir? Stereo I bought from him. When? When? Well, he was staying there. When was that? What year? And if, if, if your counterclaim is granted, you're very clear on what you're alleging. He's very confused, so I'm inclined to believe you. Uh, secondly, however, I'm going to hold you liable for burning his furniture and causing damage to his property. Good luck to you, gentlemen. Judgment for the plaintiff, $2,400, and judgment for the defendant for $430. So everybody gets what they asked for today. Have a good day. I just hope the best for him, and that's about it. I just, I just I hope he gets better and leave me alone. You know, it's unfortunate. I don't want to be his friend anymore. He keeps wanting to be my friend. I don't need that in my life. I'm trying to be sober so he can live his drunk life.